It's Sunday, May 16th. Oh, it's my sister's birthday. 2021. My name's Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number, number 601. Are you ready, Jeff? Because <laughs> apparently it doesn't seem like you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, to- I- I'm ready. It's just as I was saying the date, I'm like, oh, hey, it's Janet Jackson's birthday today. Which is- means that it's my sister's birthday today. <laughs> that's, that's nice. <laughs> and to celebrate my sister's birthday. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just finding this hilarious that I just remembered my sister's birthday. But we have Andrew and Angelina Cook with us. Yay! Yay! Hey, I, I just find it funny that you were saying that I, you know, I wasn't ready yet, and I just said something randomly, and then oh, I was totally ready. Audio, I was just saying, and I'm like, oh, hey, for the intro, and then look, I did the intro perfectly. Audio. I just was like, like ding, sudden realization. It's not like I'm going to do anything for my sister's birthday right at this moment. I'm just like, oh, hey, I just realized this. <laughs> so, Gary, to celebrate my sister's bogus. birthday, what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how relevant this will be to your sister, but hey, Jeff's sister, if you listen to the show, <laughs> did you know good. there are a few great ways that you can help support Cubs Out Loud? <laughs> In 2018, we joined Patreon. And all of our patron subscribers get full access to our shows, including the pre-show, which you just missed, and the post-show that's yet to come. See, we like to give you a little edge there. For just a dollar a month, you can get behind-the-scenes access and help Cubs Out Loud. You can find out more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. We want to thank our COL patrons for supporting the show. And this week's episode is another entry in the Landscape of Relationships series. This time we're going to talk about friends with benefits brown uh, chicken brown cow wink wink nudge nudge and and it's and that's back with us Yay! yeah and and Yay! and it's not one of these shows Let's talk about sex. just say it no i mean it kind of i mean be. It it, in is. relation but it's relative like a relationship but we're, we're not strictly talking about sex well, it's like, just involved. I think that begs the question: Is a friendship a relationship? Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh-oh, Gary. <laughs> you don't know. You... <laughs> I mean, professor, I professor. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, I will pick uh, Gary in the front row. Yes. Thanks, Teach. Um, since relationship has the word ship in it and friendship has the word ship in it, I think in a Venn diagram, they overlap each other. I think that there is possibilities for friendships to be a relationship or for relationships to be a friendship. So I say yes. I also say yes. I, I similarly so agree. Words, but I say yes. <laughs> I believe... <laughs> I, I, I believe a friendship is part of the relationships because like when you I, I would say this is not quite a Venn diagram because when I think of Venn diagram we think of friendship and relationship being two separate things but there's a crossover in there but I don't think that's the case I think that the uh, re- the friendship is inside the bubble of relationships because there are different type of relationships inside such as job work related rela- relationships family rela- familiar re- relationships uh, um intimate relationships, et cetera. Yeah, you're all right. You get all the points. A plus is for everybody. <laughs> man, I, um, man, this is this is the yeah. best uh, this is the best professor I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah, because I mean so you know if we're looking at this as the landscape of relationships, uh, you know, there is a wide range of different kinds of relationships and friendship is one of them. Um Think about it like an umbrella uh, where uh, friendship falls under that. Uh, but the, and you know, like, so when I was kind of 
you know, doing the research that I typically always do. Uh, you know, I felt, so a lot of couples define friendships as a very important kind of relationship. And within the LGBTQ community, historically, friendship has been very important because we've, you know, needed to rely on friends um, after maybe another relationship in our life, a family relationship, we didn't get support. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, we talk a lot about in the LGBTQ community as the chosen family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very true. That's very mm -hmm. true. And um, so there was an article in the Atlantic in 2020 that talked about um, kind of the um, – the importance of friendship and uh, the importance of friendship from a cultural and historical context. Um, mm. Like they talk about uh, like romantic friendships of the, the 19th uh, century. Um, you know, these are friendships that use a lot of flowery language. And a lot of times people look at those, uh, those friendships um, and they, they think, Oh, well they were, intimate relationships when that typically or sometimes wasn't always the case. Um, so like our definition of what considers to be a romantic relationship versus a friendship has evolved over time. And one of the reasons that this happens is we have developed this idea of the relationship escalator, which we've talked about before. And that is mm -hmm. a set of societal expectations for intimate relationships that partners follow um, a progressive set of steps, each with clear markers with a goal in mind. Um, and those are, you know, like flirting, then we have initiation, where we're like, you know, doing the deed, right? Um, then we have the claiming <laughs> and like defining stage, like, hey, do you wanna do this? Like, are we, are we boyfriend, girlfriend? Are we boyfriends, right? What's going on? Um, and then we get established where we're um, kind of uh, merging our schedules together, right? And we're sharing time together. Then we, then we have some kind of commitment, right? We're saying, hey, this is an exclusive relationship. Um, that's where kind of the expectation of monogamy comes in. And then we merge our lives together. Um, typically, we are uh, you know, there's the assumption that we're going to merge our finances, um, merge our lives. We're going to move in together. Um, and then the conclusion uh, stage is when we are getting married um, or we're having a, a, a ki we're having kids. Um, mm. And these are like what society deems is really important stages in a, a relationship timeline. Mm -hmm. Um, and finally the legacy, right? Um, I, no, actually I think the legacy is when we buy a house together and when we have and raise kids and a lot of times relationships are judged if we don't do those things, right? Like those are the kind of the clear True. indications that like, this is a successful relationship. For, yes. For some people. For, for some people, right? Yeah. Yeah. Not for everybody. <clears throat> And this is why sometimes people um, have a hard time when, when maybe two people are really close. They're like, well, are you in a relationship? Like, what's your deal, right? So we have this like cultural narrative, um, this like script that if you're really <laughs> close and you're, you're kind of intimate, that there has to be some kind of romantic relationship. Yeah. And that's not always. <laughs> Every like all the time we want to just we need to define something. We almost always have to like it's I think ingrained in our nature to like you two over there who are always together, who always go out, who always do things together, who obviously are fucking like <laughs> like like what what is this like what what is going on here? Like we need to know what's going on here because. We need to, as a society, define it so that we can know whether we like it or not. I'm going to put it like that. Like, I think in some ways that's kind of what it is. Like, we're like, oh, well, oh, they're just, well, friends with benefits is one of those ones, but oh, they're, 
they're in some kind of kink like dynamic and da 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 like that's his boy or that's his pup or that's his sir or whatever Which is kind a of thing. Yes, agreed. I'm just saying, but it's like so we either we need to find it or they need to find it so that we know what it is. But it could just be two good friends. Exactly. And um and I think this, you know, uh I'm pretty sure that this kind of shift happened right after World War II with the um, the definition of the nuclear family, right? That like we needed to kind of go on this natural path in order to achieve the say American dream, right? Mm. Um, and you know, and uh, where the queer community comes into this is when um, marriage equality was uh, uh, was reached, right? In uh, when was that? 2017? Um, 16. 16. 16. No, 15, 14. Wait, when was I married? <laughs> <laughs> 2014, right? 2015, 2015. Um, when that was reached, right, then um, like same sex relationships could achieve the relationship escalator. They were validated. Right, they were validated in that, right? Yeah. However, a lot of people in the in the queer community really resisted against that because they were like, no, this process has, you know, totally, um, you know, been our <laughs> enemy for so long. Like, we don't want to be defined by heteronormative ideals. Or some people might, might say... Um... Uh, uh, marriage is a religious concept and has no place to be in our laws, which is practically a quote uh, from a previous co-host of the show, uh, Griff, in the first generation. I would say that a lot. Mm. So there was it, but of course that was also before we got officially marriage equality in in the eyes of the government. Well, right, and on, on this particular like uh, tangential like portion of the show about like marriage, I agree. Like when I was in college, my mom had said to me, "Do I ever think that you know same sex couples will be able to marry?" And I said, "Well, society and or government has to move beyond the issue of spiritual marriage versus legal marriage. I'm like they are two totally different things. Political, legal, justice, marriage." is built on spiritual marriage. I'm like, but spiritual marriage has many problems because spiritual marriage came from a growth out of societal like construct and had to do with treating your spouse as chattel and possessive and like, so there's a lot of things that have to be addressed and dealt with that. So mm. when um, Obergefell versus Hodges was decided in June of 2015 by the Supreme Court, the issue was that, you know, trying to bridge together these two areas of spiritual versus like just justice political legal um so i find it interesting that you know that there was a and probably still is to this day quite you know a certain amount of opinions on that stuff yeah so ed i got a question for you and i don't mean to like play uh challenging pupil but <laughs> so my question is, so the relationship escalator is about intimate relationships, but I was thinking most of the way through this, what about a platonic relationship? Would it would it would the relationship escalator model not be applicable to that? Well not well so here's the thing is that a platonic relationship or even like a um a non platonic relationship like we're talking about, like a friends with benefits. When people um, see two people who are very, maybe even very intimate, whether that is, you know, emotionally, sexually, whatever, uh, they're like, oh, well, there is this expectation that you're going to go on this relationship ex uh, escalator when that's not always the case. Right. And this is why, um, like, this is where kind of like the um, like consensual non-monogamy comes in. Right. Like you can step off of the relationship escalator right to define your own relationship and not conform to the ideas of this uh like society's expectations of how a relationship progresses mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think, that, I think the relationship, the relationship escalator is the uh, um, uh, romantic relationship escalator. <laughs> Right. So uh, like Yeah, it's it, mm. it because I wouldn't be surprised if you could probably do a similar sort of thing with different types of relationships. It just wouldn't be the same escalator. Right, and we're See, and I, we're gonna like yeah, we're gonna talk about that. Because mm -hmm. this one leads to the end of the romantic relationship. Uh you know, this is this this one leads to JC Penny's. Uh, but if you take this other escalator, it, it um, it's uh, actually a friends with benefits, uh, uh, good friends with benefits uh, uh, escalator. Uh, it leads to J.C. Penney's, or, or not J.C. Penney's Macy's. Uh, I guess because I'm looking at it, I'm just trying to think of like mall stores. So I probably would have said Spencer's for the friends with benefits. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's probably that's probably a good. Good cause. But the reason I'm asking is because I think of two of my of my female best friends. Um, the first of which we had said if we got to age 40 and both of us were still single, we were going to move in together and just live out the rest of our lives as a platonic relationship. Like we would still pursue intimacy with, you know, those that we wanted to. It just wouldn't be with each other. Mm. But and this is mind you, this is when we're in our 20s. And I think of my current best friend who is a, a lesbian and how like we have made contact. We have initiated like our relationship as friends. We have claimed and defined the relationship over the past 20 plus years. We've been committed to each other in terms of like being there for each other in times of like great strife and difficulty and challenges. Um, we've merged our lives, not like physically together, but we've shared a great many things. I know about their family. They know about my family. Like they've yeah. actually met my family. Um, I've not necessarily met theirs. Well, that's not true. I met one person. We didn't get along. So um, <laughs> this is back when I was in my 20s and very outspoken. Um, and and it really hasn't had a conclusion, but it does have a legacy. So that's where I guess, and maybe it's just me. I'm like, I'm looking at the model concept and I'm like, well, I think it's applicable outside of that. And, you know, to just call it like romantic or intimate. But then again, I'm not, that's why I'm posing it and saying, eh, I think this is, applicable in several different ways but it's actually multiple escalators is going through some of the steps as yeah. the first escalator then you can divide and go into two different directions and two more escalators yeah i mean so like Thank so you, that uh that the atlantic article really talks about that that like some people um like their closest friends right are at the forefront of their lives right and like mm -hmm. if they do get into a romantic relationship there's this expectation like, hey, like, like you're not going to, you know, like you like I guess there's a, an expectation of like romantic relationships that there's a hierarchy um, mm -hmm. and with um, with some people, it's like, no, like, you know, this relationship, this friendship that I have is like very vital to me. I'm starting to think of relationships as a shopping mall. <laughs> and over to your left, you have friends with benefits. Step in if you'd like, but don't stay long. So does that mean that the vain oh. friends are the ones that are in the glamour shots like, <laughs> store? The vain ones you know, in the mirror, like in the like hall of mirrors, like no, no, that's fun. And what does that say about the ones that are at Forever Twenty One? Does that mean that they're not willing to grow up? And yes. should I be just seeking out the ones that are in the food court because they really love o Orange Julius and Auntie Anne's? I mean, like, if 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 you if if someone mm -hmm. is like still at like the Forever Twenty One or the Abercrombie and Fitch, like. You might just want to let them go because it's time because they need to let it go. Yeah, they have a hard time with change. Mm. I really love the ones that go to the Apple Store. <laughs> I do too. And and the kids are great down there in Camp Snoopy. There you go. Which it's not called Camp Snoopy anymore, but I call it Camp Snoopy because this, for the longest every time I went to the Mall of America when it first opened, it was called Camp Snoopy. So. Mm. Lovely. <laughs> I miss Alpha Wing Cowboy. That was a great ride. Anyways. Okay. So, so Ed, 
all of that being said, what does science say about friends with benefits as relationships? Science. Well, you know, yeah. So, like, you know what we need to do, though? First, we need to, like, so what is a friend with benefits, right? So, like, a friend with benefits is a, what? Oh, are you asking us? Are you asking us? Oh, yeah. What 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 is your yeah what is your definition of a friends with benefits? Oh Lord, okay. Anyone? Anyone? I I'll, I'm willing to go first, but uh, to me it's tricky. Yes. Here's why. Um, I consider a friend with benefits a person that you have a strong bond with that you consider a friendship, but that bond includes being intimate with them now this is where it gets tricky because i think intimacy has various like levels or Mm -hmm. potential so like i here's here's uh, an example i can think of at the moment i consider vince a very dear like close best friend of mine like that we consider almost each other like like family Mm -hmm. but i don't like we're not in a relationship in which we're sexually intimate with each other but like we would give each other a hug you know a kiss so like those are displays of affection that is some level of intimacy that i do not share with other friends mm-hmm. does that make sense like that's why i'm like Ooh, i think it's kind of tricky because i because i don't i personally wouldn't apply fwb you know friends with benefits as a label on our relationship probably because i think most people think of with benefits and i'm using air quotes for our listening audience (laughs) with benefits means you know like yeah there's there's some there's some dna exchange of some kind going on or an attempt (laughs) or something yeah yeah i mean like like you are you are being uh physically intimate not just i I, guess yeah this i i think it displays of affection just this kind of like your level of friendship with somebody is you're close enough that you're gonna you know give them hugs kisses etc um but not necessarily go all the way per se um yeah i i really think it's one of those where somebody who you really enjoy being out with not somebody you want to have like a romantic relationship with but that plutonic relationship but on occasion, you also have sex. I've I've had one of those. Actually, I kind of still have one of those. It's just <laughs> we haven't had sex in a while, or actually really met up. But COVID. Um, well, also he's in Minnesota. <laughs> oh, well, that too. Um, distance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, distance. Yeah. Damon, I'm, what about you? Somewhat similar, I think. In using the term in and of itself, I have always used it to define a platonic friendship or engagement with someone that includes, you know, fun stuff on the side, meaning like usually sexual, uh, but also can include things like we're going to hang out, you know, and do things or go out and, and, you know, and um, see each other and sometimes have sex, but not always. That's not the only thing we do. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that's for me what it is. It's not because it's a, you know, it's better than a, and can be more engaged than say a hookup or a uh, booty call kind of thing, you know, but it's not quite a full on like we're dating we're we're getting married you know we're not on that train or that escalator Mm -hmm. like we're we're seeing each other occasionally we're enjoying each other's company we're sometimes having sex but that's the extent of it it's not a a like long i well it could potentially be long term but it's not a like we're going to be together we're going to you know get together and get married there's not those kind of strings aren't there for one reason or another yeah exactly so yeah so a like a friends with benefits to me is a friendship right like an established friendship Mm -hmm. with another person that there is um a sexual component there 
Um, and so the, the, so the research, so a lot of research, um, if you like aren't aware is done with, uh, university students. So I found this, um, one study from 2017 from the university of Denver, um, that looked at, um, 171 students, um, interestingly more women than men. Um, and they were, we, they were surveyed on, um, uh, aspects of sexual satisfaction, commitment and trust of friends with benefits relationships. And that was defined as a established friendship that you had, um, that you've had sex with at least once. So the big takeaways from the study um, are, can I get a drum roll? Communication and the healthy, uh, healthy boundary setting. Um, oh. Gee, this sounds familiar. This sounds very familiar, right? So they yeah. found that sexual satisfaction was important, but so was um, sacrificing for the good of the of the partner and not looking for the for the next best thing, as mm. well as uh, communication and setting healthy boundaries with with that person. Um, now, with uh, university students, um, so when I went to the University of Delaware, like you know, seven years ago. Um, I took a class um, where we talked about, you know, school life and everything. And a lot of the students that I um, was interacting with really favored friends with benefit situations because they were already so stressed with school that having a romantic relationship would just be an added stressor. So they opted for the friends with benefits um, arrangement in order to reduce stress, which I thought was very fascinating. It actually makes a lot of sense when you think about it. Right. Like, I, like, you know, good friends, you know, stated buddies, uh, uh, reward each other with, with sexual gratification. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm thinking more along the lines of like, I don't have to worry about like, well, you may still, but like, you don't necessarily have to worry about like scheduling time and, and, and being together with your romantic partner when you're just like hanging out kind of thing. And like they, you, you would think, again, think that a partner romantically would know like you're in college. So like you've got a lot, you've got all this stuff that you have to do as well, but that doesn't always work. We've seen it happen in every fucking college movie, like, <laughs> like out there, like are every like high school where the person goes away to college kind of bullshit movie that we've seen. Like it's, it's always there. So but I agree. Again, I like the idea behind the whole commit the communication and boundaries because that's kind of important. You know, if you're kind of in this like friends with benefits situation, and like, hey, like I I know I got a test Tuesday on thir night, uh, Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I as much as I would love to come over and fuck, I can't. And they're like, oh, no, I understand. Thank you for telling me. I'll work on such and such. <laughs> or, more or do you need of, help? <laughs> or more along the lines of, like, every Tuesday night, I have a class that goes until, like, 10 o'clock. Like, I'm not going to be free until maybe 11. Like, just so you know. <laughs> Here's my class happens. schedule. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so yeah, so, I mean, I think that that also makes a lot of sense to me. Um, so when also looking at some of the, um, you know, resources on friends with benefits, um, I got some tips, um, and I got some kind of, um, rules of engagement, if you will, mm. uh, because a lot of the resources talk about the fact that friends with benefits while it sounds sexy, um, it's not always great and it can be difficult. So um, mm -hmm. the, the key thing here is that friends with benefits are supposed to decrease pressure, pressure not add pressure. Mm. Um, so uh, the, the one thing that uh, is suggested to uh, help decrease pressure pressure is not go seeking for a friend with benefit. 
because in order for um, for there to be a friend with benefit, you have to have an established friendship. So that means that mm. um, you're going to have to like have a shared history. There has to be some trust involved, um, you know, and those things take time. So to call a an arrangement of friends with benefit from the beginning would be a misnomer. Mm. That's not true. And you're you're with that. You're adding pressure. Um, to a to a a young relationship, right? Expectations that may not necessarily be on the same page with the other person. Exactly. So, like, so these things are going to take time. Um, they also must be mutually beneficial and convenient. So, like, you know, sometimes people will get into what is called like a friends with benefits situation because it's convenient for the other person or it's beneficial to the other person, not because it's beneficial to both people. And this is where things get messy and um, tricky. Um, mm. So you wanna make sure that everybody's on the same page. And one of the other things that I think is really interesting and I agree with is that a lot of people think that because a friends with benefits is not a romantic relationship, that there doesn't, that there's no emotions involved. So, like, if a friends with benefits situation ends, you can't get upset. And that's bullshit. Well, it's just like any other relationship. Well, it's exactly. because, it, honestly, it's because of the friends thing. Because when you take a look at, like, uh, things like uh, uh, a booty call, you know, or, you know, it's somebody who you have a, your your relationship just involves getting together for a sex hey, a hookup uh, not necessarily even one time fuck buddy whatever you want to call it um, which personally I think is one also a route to friends with benefits it's just mm. you start with the benefits and then maybe eventually along the line something happens where you end up becoming more than just the benefits and becoming the, the, the friends. You could start as a friend and then get benefits. Or start with the benefits and then become a friend too. You know, that sort of thing. But um, it, but because you hit that friend zone, which sounds weird, it, just having the friends uh, attached to it is where you actually start getting an emotional connection. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you're when you're just dealing with the benefits, just that that fuck bitty, it's like uh, they can't do it. We haven't gotten together. I'm just not going to worry about it because that's all we did. We didn't really become yeah, that. We didn't get that friend zone. That's a really important distinction. Mm. So uh, so so yeah so yeah we'll we'll talk more about that, but um. So there are these two quotes from this article that I, I linked in here that I thought were really awesome. Um, so mm -hmm. I want to read those. Um, so the first um, one is, it's confusing to try to develop friendship founded on a sexual relationship guided by a rule system that has to be invented as you go. Or when you're trying to force a friendship so that you can add sex as a benefit, where does the friendship part fit in? That's putting the benefits before the friendship. True. Right. And that kind of speaks to what, what Jeff was talking about. Um, that like um, with a friends with benefits situation, one of the really important things is the, with the, the word friends with benefits, that term friend comes first. Benefits comes second. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, the, the second one is sexual exploration can and often does become a part of an existing friendship between consenting people, or you may have been in a romantic and or sexual relationship with this person earlier in your life, but now it's morphed into a friendship. In such circumstances, the sexual connection may remain or may be reintroduced, but the common thread is the history between you, the investment you share in the friendship and the trust that has formed. 
you recognize that you both enjoy the chemistry, but you may not be as compatible emotionally as you are sexually. It's a mutually understood experience. The connection you have as friends determines whether this time in your life and in your relationship is right to be sharing benefits. Mm. That's a good one. Hmm. Yeah. So here's so here's kind of my kind of thoughts on this. Mm-hmm. If we look at the relate, if we look at the relationship escalator, it sounds like a relationship. Mm-hmm. So, like, I can understand how some people um, who like maybe invest in the relationship escalator model would look at something like this and be like, "Well, y'all are dating, <laughs> or y'all are in a romantic relationship," and that adds anxiety to what could just be a friends with benefits situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. When like, mm-hmm. no, like I, I don't want that kind of, a, I don't want to build my life with you um, yeah. in that way. The goal here isn't to, you know, have a legacy together. It's to grow as two independent people who like to fuck sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes that's all it is. There's two exactly. people that, like two friends that just like to fuck and that's okay like or it should be okay let me put it like that like depending on the nature the nature of your you know if you have also a romantic relationship that's where things could probably get a little murky but for the most part like if everyone is okay and everyone is consenting and everything is fine then go for it like there's no need to in relationships are to society anyways. given to societal pressures and um, make things that aren't necessarily part of your relationship part of your relationship when you don't want it to be mm-hmm. which is going back into the whole comment about healthy boundaries yes boundaries are important Boundaries are very important. Um, so, like, so this other resource that I found um, gave some tips, right, for having a, 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 a friends with benefit, friends with benefits relationship that isn't a hot mess. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that title. But um, but first, we want to make sure that we can handle the emotional complexities. If you know that you're a jealous person. Um, and you have a jealous demeanor, maybe a friends with benefits situation isn't the best situation for you. Mm-hmm. All right. There's a lot of emotions that can come up when having a friends with benefits situation. And, uh, you know, we have to make sure that we have the emotional maturity, the emotional intelligence in order to uh, sustain and process all of the complexities. I think. One of the keys to that particular point, Ed, is do you have the ability to remove yourself from the situation in terms of like how you think about it? Like, can you keep yourself in check if you do find that things are becoming emotionally like challenging? Mm. And by that, I mean, like, you know, can you say to yourself, okay, I apparently am getting upset or envious or mad or jealous or something. And I think if you have that ability to recognize what's happening, you can work on that and then determine where you want to go and what direction. And maybe, you know, this isn't good for you to continue at that point. Um, Because I think, (laughs) but, but not everybody I think has that capacity and that's more where I think there's a bigger challenge that if you misconstrue the friends with benefits relationship as a romantic relationship, like as a committed you know, kind of um, relationship in a different term, that's where I think it becomes much more difficult. And that was one of the things that uh, that uh, the the study in the University of Denver said that the problems start happening when the one of the people in the relationship starts seeing them as a we and not an I. Mm. Okay, interesting. Um, but to to your point, I think we did. Didn't we do a topic of this on uh, like relationship traps or something? We talked about jealousy at some point. Yeah, I think, I think we, we had, I know we talked about jealousy. jealousy. Um, 
but to that point, like you can, you can, like jealousy is going to happen. Like it is a yeah. valid emotion, and um, and that's why communication is really important because we have to have the emotional maturity with this other partner to feel open to say, hey, listen, you know, I'm I'm uh, I'm experiencing jealousy, and I want to talk about this with you. Um, and it's not it's not a um, it's not something that we should avoid um, because it's a it's a real emotion, and and the longer that we sit on it, the uglier it's going to get. Right. And for those of you that are interested, Ed is correct. Last year, almost exactly 52 weeks ago, it's actually 51, was episode COL 555, Landscape of Relationships, Jealousy. So, Hey, Jealousy. Sorry. <laughs> if you would like to watch the video, it's you can go either go to CubsOutLoud.com and search for that episode or go to our YouTube page at YouTube.com slash CubsOutLoud and go into the uh, playlist called Landscape of Relationships. I love that we have a playlist. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so the next tip is, which I really appreciate, is to make sure that we are defining what friend means and what benefits mean. Um, and make sure yes. that the other person is on the same page as far as those definitions uh, are set. And then also, they can change at any minute. Mm. So true. So very and, and true. They are, when they are changing, we need to have a conversation about the changes that need to be made. Communication. Mm-hmm. And boundaries. Yeah, it's 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 one of because really this this is kind of like the uh, kind of the the kind of balance point between friends and fuck buddies. You know, it's it's like this is like the middle ground where you're kind of both. You know, friends with benefits is basically both. Your friend, Jeff. You're get, you're getting ahead of yourself. You're getting uh -oh. ahead. Of Oh, it's coming. Uh -oh. I'm sorry. Coming. Slow down. Slow down, my friend. It's coming. Slow down. <laughs> I need you to edge a little bit longer. <laughs> I'm getting so close. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Just, just, just slow down. Take your hand off. <laughs> just, Breathe. Just, just stop touching. <laughs> Take some deep breaths. There you go. Dead puppies. Dead puppies. <laughs> no! <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. Okay, anyway. so to continue with that, um, so we also don't want to start a friends with benefit relationship with somebody who wants something more. Big one. And that Big is one. that is something that is, I think, a common um, trap that a lot of friend with benefit situations run into um, when one of the people. Uh, just goes along with saying it's a friends with benefit when they want something more, mm -hmm. and they're not they're they're not confident enough to say to the other person, "Hey, I think I want something more from you," mm -hmm. because they're afraid that if they say that, then that will end the the interaction. Yeah, that's but, a big one. But right, but there should be a healthy conversation about really? absolutely like wants desires needs mm -hmm. like because that's how you determine the boundaries yes that would be a that's a very brave conversation to have and it can't happen Ooh. but the person can just lie i'm just i'm just gonna say it i'm just gonna be honest with you like i want like the, the person a who wants just like our friends with benefits thing can say this is what the boundaries and what the whatever is going to be and the person b who actually wants something more to it is going to be like uh-huh yeah Sure. Right. Okay. I agree. Yeah. Sounds good. That's a healthy I'll stick, relationship. I'll stick right to that. I will stick to that. And then three months down the line, why were you out with that bitch? Like, like, I just like that. Is the, I, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, right. I mean, but, but to me, that's, that's where things have shifted though. Like one person in particular started moving into that jealousy realm 
mm-hmm. using going off of your example, Damon. Like right. I agree that yes, well, a person could lie. Um, I would hope though that the friendship is as well enough established that like honesty is one of the building blocks that establish this relationship. So while I can understand that a person would be hesitant to open up because as we've discussed before, that makes you vulnerable Mm -hmm. and you know, vulnerability is intimate in some fashion. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I think that would be a, a key thing to address you know, to another person, if for some reason you would like the the situation to change mm. or modify, or more importantly, I think just talking about it, like yeah. having the conversation and saying, Hey, I really enjoy the time we spend together. And I don't mean just like, well, you know, when you're trying to, you know, fill me with your DNA. <laughs> I also <laughs> like hanging out just in general and the things that we do and that's when you hopefully I'm going to say, in my opinion, hit the pause button in the conversation and wait for a response. Because communication is, is that, you know, two way street, so to speak, in this in this circumstance, this example, let them think and process and reflect like sometimes less is more. And in this moment, you don't maybe know how they're going to respond and where they feel about this. So before you continue on and start opening yourself fully up and, you know, going down a certain path, you might want to just assess the situation, their reaction, how they're feeling, and then make a determination, like how much further you want to continue opening up or discussing this thing with them. Because if you're concerned, if you do think there's a possibility that they might reject, you know, and that would be bothersome to you, then like, I guess that's where we say tread lightly, you know, like be, be comfortable but careful you know with with this kind of a thing that's the way i view it at least as opposed to just you know opening mm-hmm. up and being like hey not only do i like it like when we have fun together and we make each other you know come i also would like to do more things and you know yeah. like stuff in public and and pursue potentially dating like you could do that but to me that's like kind of really putting it on the table mm-hmm. so. and that's where sometimes the friends with benefits relationship ends and the romantic relationship begins and they can sway into each other. I'm pretty sure like a friendship can develop into a friendship with benefits relationship and then can develop into a intimate relationship. We're not saying it can't, but I think that's um, an important distinction. If that makes sense. Like, Right. Like, I, I hate putting the, the boundary around all of those things, but that's kind of the point. So, well, it is. I mean, because we talked about the fact that, like, you know, communication and boundaries are really important when we're having these discussions, right? So, like, um, you know, as far as benefits, like, what does that mean for you? Are we allowed to, um, are we allowed to, you know, is it, you know, are the benefits just sexually related? Are they just acts? Are there, you know, emotional benefits, um, yeah. financial benefits, like, mm. like what is it? Um, and that's why it's really important to be clear so that when those boundaries get crossed, the other person can say, hey, listen, remember when we had this discussion and we talked about the benefits that were involved in this? Well, you know, you've been blah, 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 blah. That wasn't, um, that wasn't talked about when we had the conversation about benefits is that something that you feel like you need if so i can't provide that Mm. Mm -hmm. i'm not here to invalidate your need i'm saying that i cannot provide that in this in this situation because if this if a friends with benefits situation is supposed to be mutual beneficial and also convenient for both of us that is inconvenient for me yes so we need to redefine we need to we need to renegotiate Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, but again, those are very brave and vulnerable and authentic conversations to have. And a lot of times people don't have those skills. They don't have um they don't have that because they're afraid of the rejection. Mm. 
Yep. Which, which I guess is like, I mean, it's fair, but I think it becomes more, uh, oh, I don't want to use this word, complicated. Like, because if this is a person that you really have a friendship with and you want to, you know, modify it and become friends with benefits, I think that for some people that will heighten the anxiety of rejection. Mm-hmm. Like, because I think some people will take it in a certain direction and say, Well, if they decline or if it begins and then it ends, what does that say about me? What does that say about our friendship? Like, does that mean we no longer can be friends? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, like, I think a lot of it it begins a whole what if like mentality, like scenario and and can be kind of crippling in a way, like to just having a, a good, strong bond with another person. And this is why I think it's really important to know which orientation that person has as far as relationships go. So if you're talking to somebody who seems to be on the relationship escalator path, this may be difficult, right? Like they may have difficult, ex- different expectations. But if you have somebody who has a history or, you know, a shared history of not being on the, es- the, the, re- the traditional relationship escalator, these conversations may be a little bit more easier to have because they have some fundamental understanding to help with that conversation. Mm -hmm. Fair Mm -hmm. point. Right. Um, But like, we're very like, I, I mean, I know a lot of people who maybe don't ascribe to the relationship escalator model, but still are conditioned to it. So like, Anytime something kind of comes up, it's like the fear goes, oh, my God, what if? <laughs> what, mm-hmm. if they want, what if What if they want a relationship? Oh, my God, they just told me they love me. Oh, my God, they want to get married, right? Mm-hmm. No, that's that's not necessarily true. True that. Yeah. Um, Agreed. So, like, the other thing um, I would love to get y'all's. Uh, thoughts on this is transparency with sex life. Can we elaborate on this? Because that seems really wide open to no me. No too vague. No too vague. <laughs> 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 so, and um, as a tip for having a, you know, maybe a healthy friends with benefits relationship, it would be helpful for each other to be transparent with their um their sexual history with their with do they have any other current friends with benefits like Mm. what um what are they engaging in what kind of sexual health um steps are they taking to protect you so let me let me see if i'm catching this correctly what we're discussing is transparency with sex of of our of their of our sex lives with each other Hmm. Okay. Because to me, that's totally different. Because just going off the outline we're working on, it says transparency with sex life. I was like, uh, I'm not a person who's open to like telling and flagging to the whole world what my sex life is like. So that's why I was like, uh, could we discuss this? Because no, I, I, what, I think I'm we fucking this we, guy. we did and each of us read this wrong. This guy. I I felt well, like no, this no, is. Like, I think this is that this is where the interpretation comes in, though, Jeff. Like each of us have a kind of a different aspect to it. So, what were you going to say, Jeff? Yeah, because I definitely read it more of um, something that happens anytime you're going to you're going to have sex with somebody is being transparent with your sure. sexual partner. So, this is not necessarily exclusive to friends with benefits. This is your romantic partner this is your uh, uh non romantic uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh hookup and just being like hey this is my current state maybe you're not going to give the full details but uh with one person over another but i would still mm-hmm. consider it that you that no matter your, your sexual partner in whatever relationship that uh sexual partners with you um that you're going to be transparent with them like you're going to be like hey up front here's the current situation i'm negative i'm prep or whatever i'm positive undetected or something like that detectable 
you know, it's it's it, they, these are the things I found in, in when I have sex. You know, it's just being transparent is a, is I, I feel like this is a thing that should be the case with any sexual partner. Mm hmm. Good point. Damon, what, what were you thinking? Um, similar to what Jeff was mentioning, that you would essentially talk about what your um, sex life is, um, what, you're, what you do, like our like sexual history, what have you, would be a part of that conversation. Um, uh, to the extent that what they may not already know. If that makes sense, they're a friend. So, right. depending on the level of your friendship, they may know some things already. Right. You know, and we all have that. We all know that. You know, we have, you know, we have that friend that we consider a quote unquote slut because of their promiscuity, as we say. But you know, they may not be as 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 what as we think they are, and mm -hmm. they could also be kind of what Jeff was saying. Like, I'm someone who always discloses my information. I get tested regularly. I, you know, you, you know, I, maybe I use condoms all the time or maybe I do this and that. So I, I do all of those things while I am a quote unquote slut. I'm taking care of myself and the people I have sex with. And that mm -hmm. might allow someone who is going into this kind of friend with benefit situation to make the decision on whether or not they want to move forward with it. And I think that is important. Like it shouldn't, well, unlike the movies, you know, it shouldn't just like happen. It can, but you know, there should be some kind of discussion. There should be some kind of like consent going on into this conversation. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause like, I mean, if you're, um, like, I don't think that this should be something that you don't talk about, right? This shouldn't be like an off the table topic, right? Because, you know, I'm having sex with everybody that you're having sex with. Um, and, um, you know, I would like to know, right? Like, are you, are you sexually active with anybody else? Um, you know, uh, what are the, what are the, you know, do you use condoms? Like what sex acts are you using? What, like, how are you reducing your risk? Right like all these things and it's very easy to to get into the the habit of like I'm just not going to, you know, I'm not going to say anything. Mm -hmm. And that's where the um like that study comes in where like you you know, like you have to consider the health of anybody else that you're having sex with at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I agree with all of that. I think that the that it's paramount for a healthy relationship to discuss each other's like those those dynamics about like sexual history and activity and status, those type of things. The way it, it originally been kind of brought up or listed was I was taking it also another level to like that you're open to telling others about your friendship with benefits. And I was like, mm -hmm. Obviously, that would need to be discussed between you and, and this other individual or sure. other individuals, however many. But my feeling on it is like it's nobody's business. So mm, like, right. if if you want to have that discussion, you can. But I don't think it's a necessity to be transparent beyond like the the inner bubble, I guess. I don't know how to phrase mm. it. Um, well, I, I updated the tag in there. So to put it to a transparency. <laughs> with each other's sexual history. Ah. Right. Um, so, uh, so Jeff, you can finally shoot your load here. So, uh, <laughs> friends with benefits, uh, fuck buddies, are two totally different things. That's so true. And I agree. Okay, Lucy, please explain. So, a friends with benefits, right, is somebody who you have an established friendship with, right? A fuck buddy is somebody where the relationship is typically sex centered, right? Um, so it's it's mainly just you're just you know it's it's mainly just a a sexual relationship, not a 
friendship. Mm-hmm. And that so fuck make... fuck buddies have hookups, essentially. Booty calls. Yeah. Whereas, like friends with benefits have dates, meetups, hangouts. They have a friendship. Yeah, hangouts. Yeah, yeah. I would. Yeah. So it's very. I and I kind of totally get that when you think about it. I agree with you. <laughs> like it. It's. It's. Yeah, they are separate. They're not the same. Friends, because a, a friend with a friend with benefits has to have kind of that friend part to it. And while mm-hmm. Fuck Buddies kind of says like, like it has that buddy aspect to it, it's. I don't think that's a. I wouldn't cons- you know, well some might, but I wouldn't necessarily always consider that a friendship. You might know them, but you know, do you know their last name? And also, do you, know do, do you know their actual name? Yeah, right. <laughs> or, or, or is it just Sloppy online? Bottom Twenty Three? <laughs> yeah, I'm fuck buddies um, with Sloppy Bottom Twenty Three. I don't know his real name, or I just call him Jack, <laughs> Jake. But like, I don't, I don't know, I don't know his last name. I may know a couple of things about his life. We may have conversations about you know sexual stuff, but like for the most part. It center the the relationship centers almost wholly around sex. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good and point. also if you look at it like we have friends with benefits, so that's friends first, and a fuck buddy is fuck first. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, uh, funny, so funny story about why I'm bringing this up. So not only was it in the um, in this 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 article thing, this listicle, if you will. But while I was showering this morning at the campsite, um, somebody who is in the shower like across from me was having a conversation, and he was like, "Oh, I'm here with a friend and a fuck buddy." And I went, "Her?" <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, "Oh, what's the difference between a friend with benefits and a fuck buddy?" Um, and like after I after I got done, I run to the campsite and I was like, "Hey, is there a difference between a, between these two? Uh, and they were like, "Yeah, a, f- a fuck buddy isn't really a friend." And I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay, hold up, because I need I need some more information here, Ed. So, did you jump out of the shower house and go? like pursue this person who had made the statement or did you just ask that question amongst your own camp mates my own camp mates <laughs> oh okay because no offense i, I had I this image of the you, shower like, walked I, right, over I had this image of you wrapping yourself in a towel <laughs> taking off across the campground and be like excuse me hello <laughs> hi no, no no i have i have a sociological kind of anthropological question for you like i'm no, I'm a licensed therapist. It's okay. <laughs> I don't mean to interrupt in your life, but I really need to understand something. Like I was I like, might Dang! be just standing you in just a towel. You said a fuck butt. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me make the. Let, let me just get some. And maybe this is just if you're two shower stalls. Maybe you're just shout, shouting over over the uh, wall. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> Are you here with a friend? As one person and a fuck buddy as a separate person, or are you, or are they both the same person? <laughs> right, right. They right. weren't. Because if they're, they're both the same person, wouldn't they be a friends with benefits? Can you define? <laughs> <laughs> I need more info. <laughs> like it was so funny. Right, but it actually makes, like I said, like you said, it makes the most sense when you think about it. Like, right. fuck buddy ain't your friend. Yeah, I, I I really think there is a a difference between like a, a hookup and a, a fuck buddy because a fuck buddy is like a, a, a repeat client, for lack of a better term, <laughs> in my head. You know, somebody you you it's like like I need sex. Oh, I'm gonna contact this guy. We'll have sex. Um, uh, or it's just the you know the one night stands so the first first time you meet somebody at the bar and you go back to your one of your places, that sort of thing. That's that's not that's a hookup versus a buddy a fuck buddy. You get that relationship that you're going to have sex more than at least one or two times. Mm. Right. 
There's, a, there's levels. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then also, when I was looking up um, another word that is commonly used for maybe something related is no strings attached. Mm. Okay. Yeah. But like sometimes when you call, like when you say like no strings attached, sometimes there are strings attached. Yeah. Somebody forgot about what a string. No string. I would see to me when, you know, NSA, like no strings attached. I'm like, Oh, that's a fuck buddy. Like no, no entanglements, no emotional like commitments, no like complexities. It is, it is just like, we are here to pole, exchange DNA. A pole is a pole. A hole is a hole. Like, we are here to exchange DNA, and then we're done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, like, I just, I, oh, God. I will own, like, no strings attached was the wor- one of the oddest things for me to like grasp, because to me there is always a string, and that string is like we have essentially become intimate with each other sexually. So we are we are in some way attached. Like whether you like it or not. Like that is <laughs> like that is mm. like I kinda like that and, album too. Hmm? No strings attached by NSYNC. Oh, anyway. Um <laughs> but yeah. No. Um uh, but yeah, like I, I don't kinda... know. I have I have some, I have some current friendships that started as no strings attached. Yeah, I mean it's it's taken me mm-hmm. a well, not, I'm not that I'm still doing it. I, it took me a while to like grasp this whole NSA kind of feeling, and but I do understand it as someone who has been involved with someone and doesn't really necessarily need like twenty hundred people like attached to me. <laughs> like so yeah the goal is yeah. to have sex and you know if we don't again well that's no big deal but it, it all these types of relationships are to me are ever in a constant state of evolution in one way or another fair right so mm-hmm. it thinks like I was, I was saying before is, is is you might have a fuck buddy that you know you just got end up hooking up and then just one time it's like like oh, I'm hungry oh do you want to go to Applebee's sure get dressed go to Applebee's hang out and then all of a sudden you're getting more of the the hanging out all of a sudden you're 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 pretty decent friends maybe maybe not like best friends but at least friends friends and then and you still have sex so now now you go from from being fuck buddies to friends with benefits because i've had some like uh some uh, fuck buddies that i i go over we get off and like we'll lay there in bed and talk about like completely non a bunch of completely non-sexual stuff maybe something philosophical um uh, geeky or just some random thing and mm-hmm. while that could still be fuck buddy because that was our intention and we're also still naked and he, sometimes we end up going with the second round etc um uh but but that still that pillow talk could end up turning into something a little bit more of a relationship whether it's just friendship or hell you right. maybe would end up being relationship and just kind of like revolves but it could also go the other way might have have somebody who who was a fuck buddy goes through you you guys become good friends but then you kind of like grow apart still end up having sex every once in a while they go back to fuck buddy and then eventually gone etc so it's this constant state of flux in relationships and and it's like the the hard friendships and and uh, uh, the romantic relationships get are are those that get to a point that solidify into like a permanent part of your life. Mm-hmm. Like my friend Keith, in that I was a roommate with in in Minnesota, I haven't really talked to him in a long time, but I still consider him a pretty good friend. And mm-hmm. uh, if he hits me up in Facebook, we talk and. 
and such. That's he's kind of a permanent part of my my life. Uh, meanwhile, there are other people who I've had been playmates with, some gotten known well, and then it just kind of we grew apart, or because of distance or whatever. Just we haven't spoken in forever or something. So because yeah. of that constant change of uh, changing of your environment and and things and things like even COVID, this whole COVID debacle probably changed a bunch of relationships. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, so I guess like the final two points here are that friendship relationship benefit friends with benefits relationships are about respect and boundaries and communication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And we want to prioritize the friendship over the benefits. True. Right. I think think the key aspect that you had said earlier was that friends with benefits starts with the word friends. Yep. So the friendship is like the, the priority, the key factor. Friends. Yeah, and maybe if you want to, if you want to kind of gather or gauge if you have a healthy friend with benefit situation, go to the movies one night with your friend with benefit. Don't have sex, and see what that's like for you. Experiment. Interesting. I could see it being like very interesting. Like, oh. Your reward for par- uh, for participating in this is we're going to uh, end up having an all day uh, uh, long session. We're going to stay naked in the no in the apartment, no. Netflix, and chill. No, mention, we don't mention the reward. The movie's over, or the dinner's over, or whatever. And no, this is something you say kiss. afterwards. <laughs> hug, kiss, good night, <laughs> and then then afterwards it says. Hey, yeah. Want to come Netflix and chill on Saturday? <laughs> right. Like all day. <laughs> come over Friday night. We'll just we'll leave Sunday morning. It's fine. We'll order pizza. We'll have some drinks. Hell, hell, we'll prepare and, and like have DiGiorno or something. <laughs> wow. Yeah. No. All right. Yeah, just pop in the oven. And... It's not delivery. It's pop it in the oven it. while you pop it in. Here's that. Wait, what? Yeah. Wait, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so also, like, something else to consider is the fact that, like, within um, the bear community, um, I think that uh, friends with benefits uh, we see often because sometimes we don't see our friend with benefits maybe once a year at a bear run, right? So, like, there are times throughout the year where you're – maybe hanging out with them but it's like non-conventional whether you're doing it online or you know over the phone through texting right and then when you go to that event you have you know your fun with them you have the benefits mm-hmm. right sometimes the entire weekend and no one ever sees you <laughs> exactly <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I didn't make Just a slipping saying. sound, but... Just saying. Just there saying. Is, there is something For those of here. you that don't know what just happened visually, I got out my shade fan based on what Damon said. <laughs> and I started sipping tea. Sounded a little oh. judgmental, but... No, anyway, not at all. So I, I do have a, an, another question. I'm not... Uh, it, it, which might be near wrapping up the show, but uh, so where would you classify roommates with benefits? That's a good question. Are you? Oh, Gary has an answer. <laughs> um, I pick Gary in the front row again. <laughs> I think it depends on whether or not you're friends with your roommates. Sure. I think that I think that's where the answer lies. If you're just roommates and you have sex, then I think you're in the realm of being fuck buddies. If you have roommates and you're friends with them and you have sex with them, then you are friends with benefits. 
Yeah. I mean, to me, to me, that's kind of th- that's my viewpoint. I think that's the dividing line because yeah. I could see either of those. Like, yeah, I've I've had roommates that I've not been intimate, intimate with in any fashion. Mm-hmm. It was purely, you know, platonic relationship that we shared a space and we were quite comfortable with that but i could also potentially see myself having a roommate that i'm not in a relationship with but we enjoy being intimate with each other so i would consider that like a friend with a benefit we mm-hmm. happen to cohabitate yeah i kind and of I, and the I, same way i think the complexity comes from the outside view i think where a lot of frustration and and confusion and problems can arise is from other people like Ed, you were talking about the escalator concept that people are trying to apply a label like they're trying to put you in a box they're not Mm -hmm. sure what this means they're trying to contextualize it for themselves and figure out like how they should reference it what it what it is and i can uh, while i can understand that struggle on a on a like you know logistics level like you know how your brain processes things there's another part of me that's like not your fucking business (laughs) (laughs) thank you so I mean, it's right true. it's like it's not it's not for you to know it's not for me to know like and i get it like i'm a very curious minded individual so i would like to know but again yeah. it's also not my business, not my business. So. and that, I've, I've had that feeling i had um yeah i had friends that were they they wouldn't necessarily put a label on their relationship what they were doing but they were clearly more than just friends, but they weren't quite fuck buddies, but they were a little bit more than friends with benefits, but they're not really doing, like it was kind of this odd, strange dynamic that was very interesting. And I was, I was, I, I will say I was in my head, I didn't say it out loud to them because I was trying to be respectful, but in my head, I kept going, what the fuck are you? I need you to define what you are uh, because I need to know. But mm. At the same time, I'm like, but Damon, you don't need to know because it's not your relationship and it doesn't right. affect you. You know, while you were talking, I like I just <laughs> had this vision of like us with like the trans community, right? Like I need to know who you are so that I feel comfortable, right? Um, yeah. And I'm like, ugh, like that yeah. feels ugly to me as it is. Like so, so actually. Yep. Um, so that is a really good point because in the one um, article, the like how to make a friends with benefits work, um, it talks about the fact that like don't you don't have to put a label on it right away. Like if you don't know and you're still trying to figure it out, mm-hmm. don't put a label on it, right? Yeah. Like, and and that could be the thing that will decrease the pressure, right? Mm-hmm. Until you figure out, oh, you know what, we are friends. Yeah. Um, we don't need the sexual component or. I do like the sexual component and, you know, I don't really want to have a relationship with you. Right. So I guess we're friends with benefits. Right. Yeah. So like kind of going back to Jeff's question, like if you're roommates and you're having sex with each other, but that's all you're doing, but you're not friends and you're just kind of, I would say mutually benefiting from the fact that you have, you know, you're paying each other, you know, paying the rent so that you have a roof over your head kind of fuck buddies but if you're you were friends when you moved in or you are you became friends over time and then that friendship led to say doing things intimately then it kind of becomes like a friends with benefits situation Mm-hmm. so and you can all discover this through what communication <laughs> <laughs> say it with me now <laughs> So basically, roommates with benefits is really just friends with benefits that cohabitate. Potentially. Or could just be fuck buddies. Yeah. Depending on the level of the dynamic between the two of you. Mm-hmm. Right, because I think what you present, Jeff, is, is a really good question. I think that it's a, a slight challenge to answer because there's a lot more going on that you would need context for subset. So I don't think you can universally across the board say all roommates who fuck each other are blank. Like, I I don't think you can, you can do that because you're, you're, you're leaving a lot out. Like as far as variables go, Mm -hmm. um, they were roommates. 
No, but I mean, I think I think it's a really good question because, like, um, I think of somebody I know of in social media, like that is in the midst of you know relocating, and has been open about the fact that they've been intimate with their roommate, who they also, I believe, consider a friend. So that's what comes to mind when you ask the question. I was like, hmm, that's really, you know, kind of interesting. And sometimes I've seen romantic relationships convert into roommates who are friends with benefits. Mm -hmm. So they are no longer in an established, like, dating, like, paradigm, like, you know, format of a relationship. They have have shifted and now they are cohabitating and they are intimate with each other, but they may not be romantically like as involved, you know, and and made that decision. And that's another view or a variable that can be complex to people from the outside because they're like, what the hell is going on? Like, I thought you two weren't dating. I didn't think you two were together anymore. But like, you know. You're constantly, you know, coming inside each other. What, 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 what? <laughs> like, uh-huh. yeah, I have two. And I can, I, I can see where that can, you that know, way. make people's brains break. So, yeah. And like you said, Gary, it's it's literally it's nobody's business. <laughs> also, that ain't your business. But some of us are perverts, and we're voyeurs, and we like to know. So, anyways. Yeah. Some some of us are more logical that we need to have some order in our life, and part of that order is is being able to label it, mm-hmm. define it yeah. in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Try to I'll take one more time. Sorry, what? <laughs> it's a salt and pepper song. None of your business. There's a, there's a whole song. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I. I I have a song in my head, and that's a- "Ain't Your Business" uh, uh, from uh, uh, ICP. So, completely different. Yeah. <laughs> completely different. Total different genre. <laughs> completely different. Anyways, well, Ed, I I want to thank you for coming on for what I think is our seventh episode in the Landscape of Relationships series, and I'm happy to say that we have more coming. <laughs> Pun intended. Uh. So we're going to see you in a few weeks in about a month uh, for another topic. So Mm -hmm. I think this was a really good one. I'm glad that you came on and and broke it down for us. Yeah, I am too. I uh, I think this, I think this was helpful. I think even I was able to give myself even some clarity um, regarding friends with benefits. It is, it is an important type of relationship in my humble opinion. You don't have to have one, but it's there if you, if you need it. Anyways. Great. So with that, uh, I think that's the end. Well, you can find ways to contact us, pop over to our website, CubsOutLoud.com. Shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. You can follow us on various social media outlets at Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube at CubsOutLoud in the appropriate places the URL. You can join our entourage chat at tinyurl.com slash cubs out or t- telegram dash C O L. I can remember this. It's right there. Um, you can also uh, find out when we're planning and recording these shows uh, by go- visiting our Google calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash C O L. You can find us on pretty much any podcatcher uh, uh, platform, uh, directory platform, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Google Play, um, um, Amazon, Audible, the name a few, um, and uh, subscribe and rate, this, rate us there. It can help us in the algorithm. Uh, you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud or get various uh, accoutrements, which, Gary, are you wearing some? Yes. Oh, this? <laughs> oh, the Sloppy Bottom 23 shirt. Yes, okay. I am. I thought I thought this was theme appropriate for today. Oh well, I suppose you're right. And, and uh, there's uh, many other different things. Uh, also, as I said, uh, Patreon, where you can get some be beneficial uh, for as little as a buck a month. Uh, also, if you uh, feel like you just want to send us some cash to help us improve, but you could go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can find me anywhere on the internet as box at box, but be box, box, something or other, or Windjum, W-Y-N-D-G-E-M. 
on Twitch, where I stream currently Final Fantasy fourteen, and uh, when I can get my players together, uh, some Bears and Dragons, uh, Bears playing D and D. Damon. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> You can find me as um, Theater Cup 79 on most bear related sites or on Facebook. Or find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. Mm hmm. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. Uh, if you would like to see my not safe for work uh, Twitter followings, it's GareBear73XXX. And Ed, as our illustrious guest host uh, for the series, if people would like to get in touch with you, what options do they have? Well, you can find me on Facebook as Edward AC. Um, I have a Instagram as Unicub underscore um, Sex Brain Wizard. Um, and I also have a, um, what is that called? Um, TikTok. Um, you can find me on TikTok as Unicub79. And if you want to also look at my not safe for work twitter you can find me as jeep daddy three yeah. um but just send me a message um to let me know who you are because i don't really want family or friends <laughs> that i don't need seeing that stuff there <laughs> some of y'all don't need to see it some of y'all don't need to see it and with that <laughs> say it out everybody Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Ciao for now.